Hello world, a hacker involved in the massive 2020 Twitter breach has just pled guilty to his involvement and is facing 77 years in prison. The breach almost feels like ancient history now, but at the time it caused absolute chaos. On July 15th of 2020, 130 high profile Twitter accounts, including that of Apple, Uber, Joe Biden, and even Twitter's future owner Elon Musk were compromised and repurposed for your typical unimaginative crypto scam. Whatever Bitcoin sent to the given address would apparently be doubled. 350 million people saw the tweets, but only 415 people fell for them, shelling out 11 Bitcoin in total, worth roughly $100,000 at the time, which is absolutely nothing compared to the potential punishment if those behind this were caught. According to Twitter, this hack was made possible via a coordinated social engineering attack, targeting employees with access to internal systems and tools. More specifically, the miscreants searched LinkedIn for Twitter employees thought to have access to these mysterious admin tools, and then obtained their phone numbers by posing as recruiters. Our miscreants then called the employees, impersonating Twitter admins, convincing them to log into a phishing page mimicking an internal Twitter VPN. After gaining their credentials, the hackers essentially had god mode over pretty much any Twitter account, which included the ability to change an account's email address and remove multi-factor authentication. Funnily enough, the screenshots of admin tools leaked to the media inadvertently revealed the apparent presence of shadow banning at Twitter. However, our hackers weren't activists, they were after cold hard cash. But before launching the operation that made Twitter history, the miscreants instead focused their efforts on making money by selling access to any Twitter account for $250 on OG Users, a forum dedicated to account hijacking. And this is where our recently found guilty cybercriminal comes in. The role of Joseph James O'Connor, aka Plugwalk Joe, was trafficking in stolen accounts. One account he was accused of keeping for himself was At6, a handle owned by the hacker Adrian Lamo, who's best known for turning in Chelsea Manning. As is often the case with cybercriminals, they have a bad time keeping their mouth shut, and just days after the Twitter hack, in what seems to have been purely an ego-boosting exercise, Plugwalk Joe, along with his co-conspirators, agreed to an interview with the New York Times. They quite literally handed over screenshots of their Discord conversations, proving their involvement, and in response to Plugwalk Joe being asked if he was, I don't know, worried about being held to account for his role in what was the biggest Twitter hack of all time, he replied, they can come arrest me, I would laugh at them, I haven't done anything. Which of course turned out to be famous last words, because they did arrest him, I can't imagine he did much laughing, and it turns out he was guilty of quite a bit. The least of which was his involvement in the Twitter hack. You see, Plugwalk Joe is, oh well, should I say was, a prolific sim swapper. Sim swapping is a unique form of cybercrime, because whilst most cybercrimes exist purely online, sim swapping has a physical component sim cards. As such, the IRL nature of it seems to invite a certain element of typical organized crime, violence. There's cases of sim swappers being kidnapped, guns held to the head and so on, and it would seem Plugwalk Joe isn't a stranger to the dirtier side of sim swapping. It's claimed in his arrest warrants that whilst he is a UK citizen, he actually moved to Spain due to death threats. In one of his sim swapping escapades, Plugwalk Joe targeted three executives of a crypto company before stealing almost $800,000 worth of crypto from their accounts. He was also accused of targeted sim swap attacks against the owners of high profile TikTok and Snapchat accounts, on one occasion attempting to extort the owner with stolen nudes. But the thing that brought Plugwalk Joe's world crashing down around him was just how easy he made it for the FBI to track him down. The overlap in IP addresses used to access his personal accounts, along with the accounts he used for his cyber criminal activities, is borderline comical. Usually law enforcement just points out a couple of instances where someone messed up, but here there's a whole spreadsheet spanning two pages. And if you perform lookups on these IP addresses, you'll find a lot of them point to M247, an ISP which many VPN services use. So Plugwalk Joe was trying to cover his tracks with VPNs, but it seems like he was under the false impression, which a lot of people are, that a VPN is some kind of magic machine which hides your identity no matter what which obviously isn't the case. By failing to rotate his IP, he created a web of connections between the accounts he used for illegal activities and in turn linked them to accounts which quite literally use his real name. But even if his OPSEC was perfect in the technical sense, the guy often changed the names and bios of the accounts he hacked to incorporate his own name, and sometimes he even shouted out his own accounts in an attempt to leech a few followers. 
In the last couple of days, Plugwalk Joe, aka Joseph James O'Connor, has pleaded guilty to an array of offences, and he's now facing 77 years in prison. Though this is more of a technical limit, it's more realistic that he'll get between 10 and 20. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, the complete solution for all your PCB fabrication and on-demand 3D printing needs. From standard PCBs to the more advanced varieties, PCBWay provides granular control over every element of your PCB. With super fast turnaround times, you'll be spending more time creating and less time waiting on packages. PCBWay also offers on-demand machining. From CNCing and sheet metal cutting to 3D printing and injection molding, there's an array of materials to choose from and, of course, super fast turnaround times. Sign up now using the link in the description to get a $5 coupon which can be used site-wide. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.